hope report on the central bank bond scam debated in parliament masa 21 atulata perpetual samagama atpat karaganna lada labaya miliyana 13 da ikmona aduma tarame garu sabha garu katanayaka tumini kudu wikuna wat hoyanna ba ada ada me ho kiyana gatte gemma bahanawa e gollo aandu weyin yaddi 2014 perpetual crush is engaged in suspicious dealings during the previous government a revelation in parliament e me perpetual samagamam pavichi karala silon grain elevators kiyana samagamen kotas 5.3 million karagena koti gana eda paadu una artha sathaka aramudalata perpetual samagama gana mama abiyoga karanawa issalama katha kare mama me parliament 2014 june maase pass wenida tensions in parliament following statement by mp vasudeva nanakara ari ari umma wari ma palne pa palen palne karan MP Vimal Virbonsa returned to remand custody. Tensions in the Southern Provincial Council after Grass and Jack Leibs taken into the council chamber. It's the 24th of January 2017 and this is your primetime news bulletin. A very good evening. I'm Shane Silva. And I'm Nicola De Souza. We start off with a look at our top story. A debate based on the COPE report on the Treasury bond scam took place in Parliament today. It was JVP leader Anurag Kumar Desanayake who presented the proposal for this debate. Pauge November maase moolle mandale wising moolle mandale idiri. Last November, the Monetary Board presented a report on the loss incurred through this bond issue on the Employees Provident Fund. In that report, it clearly states that through the purchasing of bonds in the secondary market, the EPF suffered a loss of 14.9 billion rupees. Those funds have gone straight to perpetual treasuries. Within the 21 months that this was subject to discussion, the profit generated by perpetual treasuries exceeds 13,000 million rupees. I asked this from the Monetary Board specialist, Dr. Sarath Amnugama, which company? can generate a profit over 13000 million rupees within 16 months honorable speaker you cannot earn such amount even by peddling drugs perpetual treasuries which has been at the center of this controversy should have been removed from this list of primary dealers the prime minister has become the main protector of this deal can we believe that proper punishment can be given by a government controlled by the prime minister therefore honorable speaker i request you as the head of parliament to steer the process of punishing those accountable enisa ma kiyanne mema wanchane kara danduwan dime kriyawali me parliamentuwata parliamentuwe pradani hatida obatuma ge atata taragena mehewanna kenaka thamai garu kata nayaka tunuma illa sitine me banku ayathara miladi ganna banking institutions are being purchased insurance institutions and finance institutions are being purchased not only that in order to ensure that political rogues move up they have already enrolled heads of media institutions to publish their newspaper the newspaper must be called the bond danungare thamai me pratihari panni chandajaratna mettuba Chandra Charatna and two others had presented everything spoken in parliament to the Supreme Court. Petitions were filed against Arjun Mahendra and perpetual treasuries. It was taken up for 3 days and was refuted without notice to the respondents. I asked those who were jeering today from the from 2005 to 2015 when you were in government there were 40 COP reports. None of it was sent to the Attorney General. We were the first to send a COP report to the Attorney General. Namo tapi nai ജയപക്സമാന്റെ You might have reached a deal with the government of Mahindra Rajapaksa. If not, 
you had no courage to speak out naeda katha karanna boruwata mada ganne epa e kale ehema deyak sara point of order you go ahead dan nathwa dan ba you go ahead prathamika ganu denu karuwe kathiyata kathiyuthu karanna isira dasanayaka was the chief director of the entra securities a primary leader during the time of mahindra rajpaksa he has 66% of the shares then comes chanuka rathwata with 21% of shares it is with these two persons on the 3rd of january 2016 entra securities is taken over by the mandri board because massive fraud was taking place it skimmed 2.5 billion from the pension fund and another 600 million from the cooperatives association this is entra securities until today there has been no proper probe into that western warriors a sports club is owned by western sports management western sports management kiyana in group of companies so etawata honda egaru amathuma velawa awasanai vinadiya ek vinadiya me ragar club ege captain kawuda me ragar club ege captain yoshita rajapaksa mahata they auctioned yoshita rajapaksa to play for them how much was paid 11 million rupees it is paid by entrust whose money was it was it not the fund defrauded from the government kage salli walin e raje wancha karupu salli walin neveida api raje te ekat unat although we are with the government the government is attempting to conceal some things we are not with that we as the sri lanka freedom party have not changed our stance we presented facts to the president and we made it clear to him based on the recommendations he will appoint a special commission in 3 months to probe into this and report back he said he will take the necessary measures avashya piyora etuma The Prime Minister is gearing for the 2020 presidential polls with the money looted by Arjun Lalshas. Media institutions are being purchased. See at the TV was purchased. Websites are also being purchased. They even purchased newspapers. These media institutions are being purchased to create the image of the Prime Minister. Adamatike prati upaya hadanna e hora ka busalli walin hada mahatya ayatana miladi gannawa Tamange pauleyata wahana 14 dila Thummul levimule who gave 14 vehicles to family members four vehicles to Ittepani Thero and misused 90 vehicles is one who had a communication in Mavada Mandir and was living amidst hardships Thummul levimule who did not even have 10 rupees to go to Sigiriya as Kaduvela Buddhadasa says has made a massive mansion down Mangala Mavata Thummul levimule did not speak of how he amassed millions even when he was remanded for defrauding the state of 90 million rupees he does not speak of it even when he was remanded for 14 days he does not speak of it rather than doing that he had pasted posters with the poem of mind thero and tried to become a national hero this is disgusting to us all what was the investigation that you enforced for the millions and billions that polluted by ajit nivad kabral what action did you take for investing in the greek bonds back then roger parkson was the finance minister and the president he held the ministerial portfolios back then Some of the MPs who speak out now did not say anything back then. Samahara mati amati oru natta gahagan idhi asse kagunde gahse gahan idhi natta. During the debate on the Treasury bond scam, new information on the infamous tre- uh, perpetual treasuries came to light. The government revealed that perpetual treasuries was involved in dealing during the Mahindra Rajapaksa administration as well. Yeah. Pump and dump, dump nyaya. The JBP spoke on the loss suffered to the Employees Provident Fund under the pump and dump theory. Ask your conscience on the fraud committed to the EPF. They used perpetual treasuries to purchase 5.3 million shares of Ceylon Grain Elevators, 57 million shares of Love Gas, 5.1 million shares of the Finance, 23 million shares of the Central Finance and 1.2 million of Bahira and dumped on the EPF. These deals caused billions of losses to the EPF. Koti ganak eda I challenged the facts of perpetual treasuries. I was the one who spoke of this in parliament first. I made this statement which is also in the Hansard on the 5th of June 2014. I said that the funds of the EPF were invested in a poultry and that raised much criticism. That is Ceylon grain elevators where chickens and chicks are bred and then sold off as broiler chicken. This is the biggest fraud committed using the EPF. White collar rogues purchased shares that were at 50 rupees for 250 rupees in a month and a half. After that it was sold to the EPF at an average cost of 187 rupees and 50 cents. I have the chart with me. A share price has dropped to 36 rupees. Ada wenakota ek kotasa rupiyal 30 aida bahala thiyenawa kiyala mama kiyenawa. 
I asked this from the government ministers and MPs who accused the joint opposition. If you have the courage, state that you will arrest Arjun Mahendran and Arjun Aloysius. Say it if you can. Ranjun Ramanak is the MP's nabbing rogues. I ask you to propose the arrest of Arjun Mahendran. <laughs> I thank you for mentioning my name, but wasn't Arjun Aloysius your best friend before the 8th of January? After our government comes in, we will definitely make the arrest. If you can, make the statement. I am saying that a fraud had taken place, but there is an allegation that he and Arjun Aloysius protected your money back then. Will you arrest them? Tell us. Don't be afraid to say it. Will you say that your friend must be arrested? Opposition leader R. Sampandan was vocal on corruption and the central bank bond scam during the parliamentary debate today. Corruption is endemic in this country. Every government has been responsible. But corruption continues. It is publicly talked about that the government is corrupt, that ministers are making money, uh, that various things are happening. Persons guilty must be punished. But it never happens in this country. For the last so many decades, we are talking about corruption. Corruption under the UNP, corruption under the SLAP, corruption under the UNP, UPFA. That ministry is corrupt, this ministry is corrupt. Who is the man in this country who has been convicted for corruption in court? Is there one person? You have been talking about corruption under every government. Has there been one single man from any government who has been convicted in court for corruption? This is the position. So you are fooling the people. You are fooling the people. You are fooling the South. You are fooling the members of the South. You are, you are hand in love with each other in the matter of corruption. Both the UNP and the SLAP are hand in glove with each other in the matter of corruption. And the people are getting sick of all of you. We had great leaders in this country. Did anyone accuse G.S. Sirenak of corruption? Did anyone accuse Hitchab Ali Bandaranak of corruption? Did anyone accuse Dudley Sirenak of corruption? Did anyone accuse Srivang Bandaranak of corruption? Did anyone accuse even Mr. Anasingh and Premadasa of corruption? No, no, only killing. Only killing. No corruption. Why? Why? What's happening now? He was accused. Okay. What is happening now? What is happening now? I'm not, I'm not saying Mr. Anil Vishabzige is corrupt. I'm not saying Mr. Baiti Palasinjali is corrupt. But there is corruption. You know it. And nothing is happening. The central bank has lost its prestige in this country. During the last regime, the central bank was accused of even engaging in political propaganda on behalf of the government. But as far as this particular bond scam is concerned, there have even been earlier bond scams. Nobody should be spared. And the person responsible must be brought to book. No one should be, no one should be spared. Questions were raised in Parliament if the former governor of the Central Bank holds any positions in the current government. The decision made by the President not to appoint the former Central Bank governor to a position in the government when considering the incidents surrounding the Central Bank was the right decision to make. The SLFP will not agree with the government if the former governor remains to be a consultant. If he was accused of something and has to prove himself innocent of any wrongdoing, he should be removed from that position. Does Arjuna Mahendran hold any position in the central bank, finance ministry or the government? Then how does he attend the meetings where important discussions about the country's economy are conducted? Do you invite him? Since you say it with responsibility, we shall consider it for now. No, that's not correct. Since he has left the office, he has never joined anything now? No, he's not even an advisor. 
Meanwhile, issuing a communique, the Ministry of Finance stated that the former governor of the Central Bank, Arjuna Mahendran, has not engaged in any activities in the ministry. However, during the recent past, on numerous occasions, the former governor of the Central Bank attended many overseas visits and meetings with Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe. Press releases issued by the Prime Minister's office have also mentioned his position on several occasions. This was captured during the official visit to Davos. Welcome back to the news. MP Vasudeva Nanayakara spoke in an agitated manner during the parliamentary debate today. Order, 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 order. Yeah. Tumhara ne mere mangi hue. Yeah. Tumhara ne mere mangi hue. Ek tumhara paal ne karan diye. We usually do not use foul language in parliament. That is not something decent. Honorable member, you have been in this parliament for years, so don't talk like that. Tensions flared at the Southern Provincial Council today when several members carried in croton leaves, jack leaves and grass when council was in session. A tense situation arose today when the Deputy Chairman of the Council, Sampat Atukorala, brought in croton branches into the session when council convened today under the auspices of Chairman of the Council, Somawan Sukodagoda. Dear Chairman, do not give this to the councillors of the government during the next council session. Teach the UNP councillors how not to prepare meals using croton leaves but by using jack leaves as well. Then the people of this country will be led by example. Do not give them anything else. Council session got underway amidst this debate regarding croton leaves, jack leaves and grass. At a time when public representatives carry themselves in this manner, our teams that went from door to door in rural villages dedicated themselves to provide solutions to the villagers' problems. <laughs> it has been a long time since the bridge connecting Kesalwata and Kammalthota in the Katuwani area in Hambantar district was reduced to a coconut stump. The villagers in the area have suffered immensely as a result of being deprived of a bridge. We came across another village in Polonnaruwa where the villagers would sleep deprived as a result of having to endure wild elephant attacks both night and day. Those elephants come into the villages from the main area national park. When wild elephants are brought and put in the park, electric fences are of no use. These wild elephants can break through electric fences and come into the villages to attack us as well as our homes. These elephants are not afraid of guns being shot at them. We have to chase them away by one way or another. <laughs> This is the road travelled by students in the Kiradikulam area in Mulathil. 
The only wish these villagers have is to renovate the road used by them to travel from the village to the town area, the nearest hospital and other areas to be accessed for their day-to-day -day activities. An event titled Climate Change Opportunities and Challenges for Business was held in Colombo today. The CEB's power generation plan came under criticism at the event. This is what I've seen from the Central Electricity Board. This is not the world we need to see. This is a world that suggests that the amount of coal will go from 4,371 to 21,647, a five-fold increase in the use of coal. Yes, it suggests an increase in renewable energy. This is not consistent with avoiding climate change. It's not consistent with an agreement made in Paris. This is not a world that I suggest is in the best interest of Sri Lanka or the world. The time for action is now. We have no time to waste. We need to both mitigate climate change and adapt to climate change. Sri Lanka is a member of the uh, CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity. It is a member, but it never shows up. It hasn't been to one single meeting, even though the sign the agreement. I would hope that Sri Lanka could really be an active participant. And I would argue that the president would be the sort of person to lead such an exercise. Anchor can come up with a really good mitigation strategy based on energy efficiency and renewable energies. The event was organized by the American Chamber of Commerce in Sri Lanka and was graced by President Marty Palasu Usena. And it's a shame that some of the, the policymakers who, who, who need to hear messages like that are not here. Um, we are, we're about to face a, a uh, an imminent drought um, and the Secretary of the Ministry of, of Power and Energy was recently uh, quoted for requesting the citizens of Sri Lanka to move away from incandescent bulbs and move towards CFL and LED bulbs uh, which is a wonderful initiative um, but don't you think that we should be taking more significant steps in terms of building sustainable infrastructure to be able to mitigate and prevent um, uh, na environmental disasters such as the, the, the droughts and floods that we're, we're about to experience? We must think how can we produce the modern energy we need for economic growth, for poverty alleviation and the obvious answer is renewable energy. Sri Lanka has an excess capability and potential in wind. So why would you import coal from another country when you already have the right conditions for a, a, an economy based on wind, solar and even modern biomass? So one does not need to import coal. One can use your own natural resources to power your industry, power the homes of every single Sri Lankan and you can do it in a sustainable way. I can understand how sometimes the wrong decisions are made to get the infrastructure quickly in place, etc. So my, I don't have an answer to your question other than one needs to sit around a table potentially led by your president who is also the Minister uh, for Environment with the private sector with civil society and plan where do we want to go. The president was also presented with a memento in recognition of his work to mitigate climate change. Former Minister Wimal Wirawansa was re-remanded until the 7th of February when he was produced before Fort Magistrate Lanka Jairatna today. Former Minister Vimal Vidavansa and another suspect were arrested on the 10th of this month and remanded for the misuse of around 40 state-owned vehicles during the previous regime, during which he served as the Minister of Housing and Construction. It is alleged that the use of vehicles had caused the loss of almost 100 million rupees to the government. During the previous hearing, Vidavansa's attorneys sought bail citing two reasons involving their client's daughter. His attorneys noted that his wife and daughter were in distress due to certain propaganda over the death of a youth at the residence of the former minister. His lawyers added that the daughter is due to sit the ordinary level examination this year as well. The magistrate who took these facts into consideration had said that the ordinary level exam, which is 11 months away, is not a reason to grant bail. The magistrate who noted that the evidence is recorded thus far proves that the allegations against the two suspects turned down the bail request. The magistrate ordered the suspects to be further remanded. 
The magistrate also ordered the arrest of an individual who pointed a finger at the judge and made a threatening statement inside court. He was charged with contempt and remanded until the 7th of February. Minister Sajid Premadas speaking in Koholangala Hambantota was vocal on the differences in development. If the miracle of development was enforced, why didn't it reach the villages? Why wasn't the bridge that will benefit around 700 families constructed under the miracle? There is a reason for that. This bridge is for the grassroots and the oppressed. Back then, bridges were built for the sake of one family and to increase the wealth of that family. Bridges were made to facilitate those who were around them. Be in good governance, move close to the grassroots and be humble to listen to the woes of these people. <laughs> Minister Sajid Premadasa placed the foundation stone for the construction of the Arabetta Bridge in Hammondori yesterday. It's been 12 years since the residents of Iralode were resettled following the devastating tsunami which struck the island in 2004. This is a report filed by News First on the village. The helpless and the innocent continue to suffer amid broken promises of politicians who only chose to visit close upon an election. When doors of luxury abodes open up every morning in more privileged areas, this is how the morning dawns to the Iral Ode village in the Bagir Divisional Secretariat in Batiklo. Our camera has captured how the day starts for Radishini. This plot of land close to a humble dwelling is the only lifeline that supports her. The harsh landscape is not fertile enough and the villagers are threatened by the lack of food. Her house looks so fragile that it can be easily washed away by the rain. It has been several years since these residents were resettled. However, the authorities have turned a blind eye towards them. In the wood, le, mala penja engalgi keeladi, wood glowlu re, thani nikire engalale, puru dapum poi kulle eladi, khattu engal engal ko basi diyan engada mille. Dera thile na angirinte, upriyesi vichi kundri yamna. Radishini's husband is a fisherman and lives with her in this small house. It is not just Radishini who is undergoing these hardships. Her neighbor, Shantimalan, and a nine year old child too lives in this small house. Almost around 157 have been resettled in the Iral Odi village. However, although 12 years have passed, no solution has been given to these people living in dire hardships. They lack clean drinking water. Moreover, the tanks used by them to collect a bit of rainwater are cracked and beyond use. This has forced them to walk for miles to find access to clean drinking water. All they hope is that someone would provide them with a solution. Speaking at the fourth ministerial consultation of the Abu Dhabi Dialogue, Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe commented on the initiatives taken to upgrade the living conditions of estate workers. Uh, we have taken over all the welfare services run by the plantations, made them state old functions. So now we are in the process, we have created a ministry of plantation community housing to ensure that we provide seven purchases of land to each of them and settlements are coming up in the areas where they were originally line room uh, labor. So we will find a change in how our system of foreign labor is treated. Hamid Al Husseini College Colombo emerged champions of the Under-19 Interschool President's Trophy tournament by beating Maristella College Nigambo in the finals. The finals of the tournament was held at the racecourse grounds in Colombo and was organized by the 1980 batch of the Old Boys Association of Al Hamid Al Husseini College. From the kickoff, both teams showed immense determination and competition to gain control of the game. At the final whistle, however, neither team had managed to score and the game went into a penalty shootout. Hamid Al Husseini College managed to score five goals in comparison to the four goals scored by Maristella College. J.M. Rishan was a judge, the man of the match. Well, that's a wrap of your primetime news for tonight. Thank you for joining us. For the News First team, I am Nicola Dizoiza. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care and good, good night. night.